Welcome back. I'm sorry, I'm just a little tired still from the last video. Remember last time we saw a very painful way to graph, which was to evaluate each input in a table by hand and then use a large table of values to create the graph of a function. Let's revisit the problem that we solved in the last video, but this time get our heads around how to use technology to make our life easier. Remember that the problem was to graph the following linear function, f of x equals three times two minus x. We also knew from previous experience that this function could also be written as six minus three times x. In this problem, we're gonna fill out the table below here using technology rather than doing it by hand. We will then plot the points that we generate in this table on the axis and we'll connect the dots between the points to create the graph. In our case for this video, we're gonna use a TI-84 calculator. In the next video, we'll see how to do this using something called desmos.com. Let me zoom out just a bit so you can see the bottom of this calculator. First thing we're gonna do is push the on button and we get the original screen. I don't really care to read all that information. In order to get the input output relation, we need to set y equal to the function value. If I push this little y equal button right there, I get to a list of y values. These are where I define a function. In this case, I'm gonna go three times parentheses, two minus x, Notice this is the long minus right there, subtraction. This little thing on the bottom is a negative sign and we'll see that in future videos. Now that I have this entered, what I really wanna do is to check out my table. If we zoom in on this sucker, do you see that word table above the button graph? If I hit graph, my calculator is literally gonna graph this. Not very useful for filling out a table. The word table is written in blue. This second button, see how there's that little arrow in the right hand corner? That tells me that I'm allowed to hit the second functionality. Once I hit the second button and I hit the graph where it says table, I'll go to the table. Notice that the first input value that I desire is not the value that is originally listed in my table. There's two ways that I can deal with this. First, I can scroll down until I get to negative two, but that's kind of costly in the sense that it requires manual labor. And you know me, I don't like to do manual labor if I can avoid it. Instead, one of the things that I can do is I can hit the tbl set, TBL set. The people that designed this calculator didn't have a ton of real estate to work with, so that's supposed to say table set. That's in blue if I hit the second button table set, it's gonna ask me where do I wanna start my table? That's the tab table start, table start. In this case, I'm gonna hit negative, it's not a subtraction, negative two. Delta table, in mathematics, see that little triangle? We read that as delta. That means what is the size difference between the first entry and the second entry, or the second and the third? What's the size difference between each one? We see that going from one row to the row below it, we only add the number one. In my case, I'm going to automatically calculate the independent variable and I'm ready to view the table again. Check it out. This table tells me at the input negative two, the output is 12. We can write that in coordinate form, just like that. And if we were really excited about this, we can actually fill out the entire table just by saying, let's run down the x values and let's see what the y1 value output for each x value is. Remember, if we go back to the y equal button, my y1 was the function three times two minus x. That's the exact function that I'm hoping to fill out. Going back to the table, I see nine, six, three, zero, negative three, negative six, negative nine, negative 12. And now I filled out my entire table just using the calculator. Do you see what a good use of technology that is? I'm going to encourage each of us, you and me, when we get our input output pairs, let's go ahead and write them as ordered pairs. This will be super helpful as we learn to graph the functions that we're working with 
two, zero. Here I've got the input three, negative three. For input four produces output negative six. Input five produces output negative nine. And input six produces output negative 12. Let's start with the lowest here. If I go one, two, three, four, five, six over, I'm gonna go 12 down. So six over and 12 down. One beforehand would be one over three up because um, the slope is negative three. So one to the left, three up. And I just keep going with that pattern until I fill out the entire table. Last step of this process is to connect the dots using some sort of straight edge ruler in the case of a line, just like that. And we're done. Check that out. With the use of technology, we turned a 10 minute problem into something that is much, much less.